Well, not the biggest fish in the world, but probably one of the prettiest. And uh, a lovely start to the session here at Walthamstow. I'm on the lower Maynard, and we're gonna talk about pop-up rigs. I've got two absolute favorites, and we're gonna show you how to tie them and where you should use them. This one's probably my favorite out of the two. It's the one I'm catching all my fish on at the moment. It's the hinge stiff rig, but my version of it. So first of all, talking to you about the boom. Um, can be made out of loads of different materials. This one is hybrid stiff, which is a coated material, probably fallen out of favour in the last few years in preference to the end trap soft and end trap semi stiff, but it's my favourite, it's the one I use most of the time. That boom remains for months and months and months. If nothing happens to it, then I'll just keep tying an upright section onto it, and this stuff is so robust it will last absolutely ages. So to put it together, I've crimped it at either end and that is so, so easy to do. So first of all, you just slide a crimp onto the end. You have to cut it to a point so you can get it through the crimp okay. Then round the eye of the swivel, back through the other side of the crimp and then pull it up really tight. That creates more friction and creates a higher breaking strain. And then I'm using the crimping tool to squeeze it down tight. And I use the larger slit in it first. That's for the larger crimps crimp it down and then put it in the small one and squeeze it even tighter. And basically the tighter they're squeezed together, the better the breaking strain. Because the coating on this stuff is so tough, it will crimp really well. This is rated at 20 pound breaking strain. If you knot it with a crimp, you can get over 30 pound breaking strain. So that's that end at the other end. Again, I've crimped a size 11 ring swivel on there, but I've crimped it onto the ring so that you get that nice upright section there and there's a hinge at that end. And this rig just gives banging hook holds. Every fish I've caught on this has been absolutely nailed and I lose very, very few fish on it. And the added advantage of having the crimp at that end is I'm just rolling a little bit of the dark matter putty around that. That's my counterbalance. And I want the bait sinking pretty fast. And the reason for that is if there's a twig or something on the bottom and it's really slow sinking, it can come down and just sit on the twig and then it's actually sitting up high off the bottom. If you put a lot more putty on, it will sink fast and it will find its way in between things on the bottom, in between weed, and it just wants to sit as close to the bottom as possible. So that's the boom section. On this one, it's probably, I would say, three to four inches long, something like that, quite short. Again, I like them short because they react really quickly. So this is dropping in between little bits of twigs and stuff like that on the bottom. If it was longer, there's more chance of it getting caught on something and not sitting properly. And then the upright section, that's made out of mouth trap. This is the 20 pound version. It suits this size eight choddy perfectly. So first of all, I'll tie onto that size 11 ring swivel just with a two turn half blood knot, really, really simple knot, wet it, pull it down tight. And because this material is so robust, just a two turn is, is enough to lock it in place and give you a decent breaking strain. You can crimp this stuff as well, but really I only crimp the 25 pound with the small size crimps. That's how you get the best breaking strain. So with this 20, just knot it on, cut off the tag end, and then I'm tying the hook on with my favorite whipping knot. So I'm going through the eye of the hook first of all, then I'm making a big loop underneath the hook. And with the front of the loop, I'm wrapping around the hook once going up the hook. And then carefully I'm wrapping around a second time, not pulling it too tight, and then wrapping around more and more down towards my fingertips, down towards the eye of the hook. Probably five turns is enough on this size of hook. And then the tag end pulls the knot tight and basically I'll pull it super, super tight, wet it, and then pull it down towards the eye of the hook and make sure that the line is coming perfectly off the back of the hook so the hook sits right. Small size rig ring goes onto that, poke it through the eye of the hook, cut it really short and then burn the tag end and that forms your D. And basically it's going to sit pretty much how I've got it there on the bottom. You want it sitting bolt upright, I don't like these too curved. And then what I'll basically do is put it around a solar rig comb, which is a brilliant little bit of kit, steam it so it keeps that curve in it the whole time. And I'll steam the hybrid stiff section straight as well. I want this to be lovely and neat and all pushed out away from the lead system. In these circumstances, I'm using it on a lead core leader. So if I hold that up like that for you, so I've got a little bit of movement between the lead and the top bead. This is the no trace system. Just on a ready tied lead core leader, this is the darker one because on the lower main the bottom's very dark, so I'm trying to match everything to it. I've actually cut the swivel off of the lead and then covered it up 
with the helicopter sleeve that comes on the system. The barrel bead is pulled right down next to the lead, so I've got that little bit of movement on the car. So as it drops through the water, that will push it away and the lead can go into the soft bottom and leave this exposed on top. And the, the softer the bottom, the further the top bead. Sometimes you can pull the bead down and have it really, really close if you don't think it's going in at all. But I prefer to use a helicopter rig when the bottom's a little bit soft out there. The lead completely disappears, add to the camouflage of the whole thing. And then if the fish unfortunately gets away and the line snaps, that no trace bead will pop off of there and then the fish can slide off the top of the lead core and get away. And I'd use this over a spread of boilies. I wouldn't use it over particle because it's a little bit too high off the bottom for my liking. But if you're using it as a single hook bait or over a spread of boilies like I am here, that is absolutely brilliant, properly nails them. And then the second one, basically you move over to when I feel like the hinge stiff rig is a little bit too high off the bottom. If there's a lot of bait out in the swim, sometimes I've had fish showing over me and nothing's happened, wound a rod in, changed over to this one and got a bite straight away. And I remember I did that on Welly a couple of springs ago and caught a 49 pound, 14 ounce mirror on it. So uh, it was well worth changing. So still fished on the lead core in this situation, but you could fish it on a lead clip as well. But the important part is the hook bait is much closer to the lake bed than it is with a hinge stiff rig. The rigs basically come from Gaz Ferrum and Ali's adopted this one as well and caught a lot of fish on it and it basically incorporates a curved shank hook. What I'm using here is the hybrid stiff steel, but I'm using it as a combi rig. So basically I'm stripping a little bit away at the end of the hook link and then tying the hook on with that same knot. So I'm making a big loop underneath the hook, wrapping around the hook once with the front of the loop, then wrapping around again to cross over and then down towards the eye of the hook half a dozen times in this situation. And then the tag end pulls it tight. And then I cut the tag end off. You don't need that at all because there's no actual hair on this rig slide over a bit of shrink tube over the eye of the hook and you can see there I've got a little tiny hook bead on there and a micro rig swivel on there as well and that basically sits up like that on the bottom and it's just that little bit closer if you're fishing over bait you're fishing over particle then having that pop up just that little bit closer to the bottom can get you bites and I've fished on lakes where you can't get a bite on the bottom bait over bait yet you put a pop up on really close to the bottom like this and you start catching them. It doesn't make any sense, but on some places it works really well. So the counterbalance there is basically a small size sinker that slid down the hook link, and then I've molded some dark matter putty around that, and that's pretty much how it's gonna sit on the bottom, the hook sitting upright like that. Just enough putty again to make it sink reasonably quick, so if it sits in between fronds of weed, it's definitely pinned down on the bottom and not sitting up too high. And then moving down the hook link onto the ring swivel, I've just crimped it on again, so, so simple to do this and retains a really high braking strain. If you're gonna do it with another different material, say you're gonna use a, a classic combi rig with IQ or something like that, then I would just tie a half blood knot to that swivel. If you're gonna do the same thing in N-trap semi-stiff or N-trap soft, again, I'd either tie a loop at the end there or just tie a half blood to that swivel. But I like the real stiff stuff because it pushes everything away. And the bait, that's attached just by putting a bit of floss through that little tiny micro swivel there, pulling the bait onto it, and then just tying a succession of granny knots around the top of the hair stop just to hold it in place. And that stays on there super permanent. I've had tufties and everything pick me up on this and it still hasn't pulled the bait off. And then finally, hook bait choice. At this time of the year, I'm getting loads of bites on gooed up hook baits and I make my own pop-ups. I absolutely love doing it, but these are out catching my own pop-ups. And the ones I've got loads of confidence in at the moment, um, the garlic, which is this one, that's caught me some fish out of here on the lower Maynard. Some of the syndicates I'm fishing, it's produced fish for me. The new squid is absolutely brilliant, the pink one. That's caught me some massive fish this year and also the Mystic Spice. It's very, very easy to do. Get some decent pop-ups, just squeeze it over the top of them so that it soaks in and just keep rattling them around in the pop-up pot over a matter of days, weeks, months, and it just draws more and more into them and have something bright over the top of the hook baits or fished as a single at this time of the year will definitely get you bites.